Yosuke no worries. We here. The evil within, the consequences. Um, I finished the review a few days ago. Well, two days ago. But I wanted to finish the game properly. So I did the game again after I completed it in Kureyami. I think that's how you say it. The difficulty where everything is pitch black. I want to see if it would get difficulter or more challenges would come up or something would come up. No, it wasn't. It stayed exactly the same except you couldn't see anything except with a flashlight. No problem. So the things that I wanted to say about it was, hmm, it was a good DLC. It was really good, heavy story driven DLC. I loved it. I did have a little bit of issues with it, but the issues I had with it were, I don't feel like it was something fundamentally wrong with it. I feel it was like my personal preference. Like they said in this DLC there was going to be guns, right? There were guns. You had a shotgun and you got a handgun. Did I ever really want to use them? No. Because it didn't feel like weapons suited that mold or this DLC in general. This DLC felt like it was a sneaking like DLC. Like, you know, you sneak you try to get round zombies and aren't haunted without disturbing them. And I really enjoyed that. What I would have liked was to be able to maybe stealth kill them more, if not use guns. Or just have the option whether I want to stealth kill them or I can sneak past them, the whole area. But, mm, yeah, the guns were good. You got a shotgun and a handgun. They were very situational, like you had a handgun for one small section of the game. And then you'd have the gun for the next big section where there wouldn't be any enemies are haunted or zombies, whatever you want to call them. Shotgun, you never really wanted to use it because you felt like you were going to, if you shot somebody, you were going to make a big noise for somebody to see you. So I kind of felt like the weapons were redundant because there wasn't really any enemies, zombies or haunted. It's so hard to express how I feel about that DLC because the story was perfect. I loved how they explained everything to do with Stem and Mobius because Rufit created a machine after his sister, Laura, got killed by the village of people that hated his family. He became twisted and he gained a dark passenger which just turned him into a psychopathic maniac that just wanted to kill. And he became a scientist just basically as an excuse to justify his ways of mutilating and dissecting people. Like he was a sick bastard. Boston. He like he would like take countless of peoples from Beacon Hospital and he would experiment on them and tear them to pieces. Like he had ways of like cutting out pieces of people people's brains and have them still alive to so they could actually see their insides getting taken apart and experimented on right in front of them. He was like he was a proper evil bastard. You know what I mean? He became twisted. But he became the centre of STEM. He created a machine so it could only function with him as the centre or him, his consciousness or whatever it was. But he allowed it so only he could control it. Mobius wasn't having a bar of it because they funded all of it. Right? And so they said, if you don't want to make, make it work for us, we'll make it work for us. So they basically took him, tore him to pieces, like cut him up. Took out his, hollowed out his skull, took out Ruvik's brain, put it inside of like a cocoon that could keep their brain fresh and alive, and they placed that brain into stem. So Ruvik became the centre, a bodiless centre of stem, the machine that can assimilate people's consciousnesses into the machine. They sit in like these kind of like bathtub things and they're connected to STEM, the machine, and that's thus connected to Ruvik. And it uses all their subconscious memories because it really takes their dark sides of their mind, like the sadness, the anguish, the misery that they've had in their minds and use that into STEM. The reason they say STEM is so important is because you could use, think about it, if you had a machine that could, the host could control everybody inside STEM. So, all the, so the host is the main source that's, that's inside of STEM and then you have users that plug into STEM and a host can actually control 
or the users. And what they kind of found was there was a user called Leslie and he was basically high compatibility with Ruvik. Like you couldn't fuck him up for some bizarre reason. He couldn't be contaminated by Ruvik. But what could happen was Ruvik, if Ruvik was able to get him, he could overwrite himself into Leslie, which basically means his consciousness, everything that Ruvik is, can be written into a new body. Think about the implications of that. That basically means immortality. Mobius knew this. That's the reason Leslie was so important for Mobius, and they wanted um, Leslie alive. You saw literally in the end of the Evil Within, it is official. Ruvik is inside of Leslie. When he liquefies him and sucks him into that the the brain thing, turns him to like brain juice basically and absorbs him into the brain, that's when he's been assimilated by Ruvik. And this was an actually incredible DLC because you found out why the characters were so godlike, like Joseph, Julia Kidman, Sebastian, you found out all about them. You know, all the the whole game was basically made up of their memories and their subconscious, you know, his wife um, Sebastian's wife was in it. Myria. She was in it. Couldn't understand it. She was in Mobius. Because she was investigating Mobius. Because she found out Mobius existed. Because their daughter got killed by Mobius. And that's the whole reason that sets the whole bloody scheme of events to unveil for Sebastian. Because he was the one that found out that Mobius existed. And Mobius found out that he was finding them out. So they took people like Joseph Kidman and Sebastian. They implemented them into STEM. Because STEM, they found a way to put people into STEM wirelessly. With a sound frequency. So we know from the beginning of the game, when they entered into STEM. It was from when they were in the police car. And you heard that beep sound. That's when they got put into STEM. And sometimes I think maybe when you're trying to break out of it or something like that, you heard that sound again to make the signal stronger to keep them inside it. The DLC was really good, man. I mean, it didn't have a lot of enemies. It wasn't difficult. It kind of lost its edge a bit from the scariness of the original DLC and the threat that Consequence posed. But it was still an enjoyable DLC. The story was incredible and engrossing. But the only problem I could say was what stopped it from being absolutely incredible was the interactivity and the length. It felt very short and they didn't feel like there was much interaction other than the story which was absolutely amazing. So I would literally, I would give this DLC an 8 out of 10. I enjoyed it for the story and how you got to see what Kidman was. But the weapons were really useless. They were situational and area based. So I don't really felt anything for the guns. When I got them, I didn't really want to use them, if I'm being absolutely honest. Yeah, that was really my review of the Evil Thing, the consequences, and how I felt about the Evil Thing overall. So, yeah. If you'd like to give me your thoughts, I'd love to hear from you guys. And until my next video, take care, stay blessed, and optimization stations, confirmation, Jonathan Nation. Yeah. Just thought I'd throw that in there. If you like it, tell me like it. If you don't, tell me it's rubbish. Just get rid of it. I will. Okay guys, until next time, take care.